My name is Jen, and I am on a journey in order to break free from the destructive patterns of disordered eating and in order to embrace a nourishing lifestyle. My roadmap can be described using an acronym of the word nourisher. So I'm doing daily video blog posts in order to encourage you, equip you, and keep you up to date on my progress. If this content is helpful or encouraging to you, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing with others. It is my deep desire that these videos would help to ignite nourishing transformations in us all. Hi everybody, and thank you so much for joining me today. What an overwhelming day. Um, I had a great opportunity to, uh, first of all, welcome to my walk. I've taken you on my walk with me today. Um, and I'm just trying to walk and be physical in order to physically process some um, of the intensity of the different emotions that I'm feeling. And um, again, this is so critical for me because I know that I know that my typical, the, the, the wiring in my brain tells me that if I had these intense emotions, first of all, I probably wouldn't even recognize them so much, but if I did recognize them and was able to name them, my typical go-to would be to process them with food. So of course, because I'm not processing with food, the, the emotions for me of shame and overwhelm and anger and disgust is just like so overwhelming right now. And but I know that I'm not processing them with food, so I need to find other ways to process them. So thank you for joining me on that journey of learning to find other ways to healthily process um, our emotional lives. So um, last night I had the, the great opportunity to work with our my counselor, who is an incredible gift um, to me and to our family. And I, it made me think about a time when, if you've never been to counseling before, I remember the first time I had a depressive episode when I was younger, in my early, early adult years. And the very first time I ever went to counseling, I was expecting that this was going to bring a lot of relief and hope. And I went and I had my session with the counselor and I have never felt worse than I did after, that's probably not true, I'm sure I felt worse in my life, but I felt very bad directly following the counseling session. And when I went back for my second counseling session, the counselor said, so how did you feel after our session? And I said, I said, well, not, not, not so great. And she said, yeah, it's very typical that you would feel worse after a counseling session because of all that it stirs up in you. And I remember thinking like, I wish, I wish that like that was on the sign up form or that was on the, uh, somebody had told me that because it's really helpful information is that just because what we're doing uh, in terms of the emotional work is good, doesn't mean it's going to feel good. In fact, it's probably, um, you know, if you're like me and you don't have a lot of capacity to handle these big emotions, um, and it's probably going to feel very, very bad. So it was a good time, um, you know, to, to interact with, um, my counselor last night, um, but brought up some really big, really hard dynamics, really big emotions. And it was very difficult to get to sleep last night, just trying to get some of that extra energy and anxiety out of, out of my actual physical body. So, um, opening up to others, um, again, this can be, I think kind of the theme for this week is the fact that opening up to others can be therapeutic and helpful and wonderful and can be super hard and really um, bring with it a lot of relational pain as well, both because of maybe some of the lack of capacity in the others around us and in the lack of capacity that I bring to the relationship to be able to open up fully or to be able to um, to engage in that relational process. And that's been just such a deep grief for me today. And, and as I, I look back on yesterday to think of the incapacity that I bring into the relationship. And if we maybe talk about, um, understanding the cycle, when I look at, when you look at that cycle, all these different patterns, it's almost like you need to put it in a box, um, called secret or whatever you would label yours as I would maybe, um, what would I label my box? Maybe on the backdrop of 
hidden or in shame or all alone because no one sees for me no one sees that that cycle is happening no one sees when I'm restricting no one sees when I start to get fatigued or when I have um, unmet physical or emotional needs no one sees when that trigger breaks and my insides go crazy no one sees when I you know binge and binge and binge and binge until I make myself sick and I promise I'll never do it again and get into guilt and shame and then um, you know somehow get the resolve to, to to reach out or do something and then to do good again about nobody sees that happening inside of me um, and even even if I do have you know have over the years built more people in my life that I can reach out to at different parts of the cycle overall um, it's a it's a cycle that happens very internally um, and very much in secret and what is so grievous to me is I understand that there is there's reasons why um, but there's also a lot of choices made uh, by me in that cycle and especially now that I'm aware of it um, now it's my choice um, to continue on that cycle or not but that cycle has so deeply hurt the people that I love the most um, because it's bred um, dishonesty and secrecy and a lack of trust and so now I'm in a place of wanting to open up to others but I've damaged those relationships and I've damaged the trust um, that is no longer there with those people that that are the people I would long for the most to be able to open up with so that is a very difficult part of the process to um, to walk through to manage and if you are a loved one or a caregiver who is loving on someone who is wanting to walk into a nourishing journey away from the destructive patterns of disordered eating and towards nourishment I just want to you know say that it's it's you know, I acknowledge the pain that you have suffered and endured through this process as well, and and that my loved ones have and do continue to suffer. And um, you know, I, I have no magical answers. Just, just I'm really sad and grieved by that by that entire dynamic today. So, um, I I'm really grateful that even in the face of maybe how dark some of this is and how sad and how overwhelming and uh, that I've continued to eat well. One of the um, cyclical patterns for me and the, um, the eating related patterns for me that I didn't, uh, sometimes I don't always realize the patterns until they're into the light, but that I have been aware of, maybe that has been exposed a little bit in the last while for me is um, if I ever ate a food that maybe made me feel a little bit sick, um, for example, we, I once had these cashew nuts and you know they were great, I'd throw them in my bag, they'd be an easy snack and I'd eat these cashew nuts and then I, I was noticing a pattern of feeling nauseous after eating these cashew nuts. And most people would then say, I'm not gonna eat those cashew nuts anymore. But in my disordered thinking and my disordered eating cycle, I went and bought more of those cashew nuts because I've never, you know, in my, now that I can see that this eating disorder has been with me since I was very young, um, I remember trying to purge in younger years, abusing laxatives, and, um, but I was never uh, really good at that which by God's grace um, saved me from that becoming kind of a, a brain wired pattern of how I dealt with my emotions. Um, but the idea that I could eat something that would make me nauseous, that would make me not want to eat or help soothe my cravings or make me sick and help make me lighter, that was very appealing to me. And even rec as recent as the last couple of weeks, I bought some chicken and it was by the time I got around to cooking it, it was a little bit old and I thought, oh, and so I, I went ahead and cooked it, but I only served it to myself. I didn't serve it to my family. And just this realization that not only am I willing to harm myself, but um, that that's why I'm doing it is this potential to feel a little bit sick and therefore not crave and therefore not, not eat. And, um, 
yeah, so to see that and to, that's really sad. It was really sad for me to, to see that, had that, that brought to light. And, um, yeah, now I can <sighs> add that to the things I need, um, to be careful of and to be seeking accountability and care and care for. The other thing about the cycle, sorry to go off on the cycle today, but um, the other thing about the cycle is that now that I've been eating well and I've been enjoying, you know, uh, exercise, not too, not too strenuous, but I'm starting to, and again, I don't own a scale. I don't want this to be the weight, but I'm starting to notice, you know, things just feel a little bit lighter. And I'm, I'm concerned about that because I know that how good that can feel to not see quite as much weight on my face or my joints and or my jeans not to quite be so tight. Um, so I just am noticing um, a potential to get sucked into that, that, ooh, restriction feels good. Ooh, I could get even thinner. Um, and I just really want to guard against that and just keep nourishing, keep nourishing um, emotions, keep nourishing my relationship with God, my relationship with others, keep fueling my body well keep treating my body well and keeping it nice and healthy. So that's uh, a bit of confession or disclosure for the day. So I've said it out loud. I've said it out loud. So now it's, yeah, now there can be accountability around it. It's so good in the presence of safe people to say things out loud. Uh, so where am I? Insulin from the eating, sleep. Uh, again, the last few nights, I just emotionally, like I, I've been going to sleep at decent times, getting up at decent times, but um, emotionally, it's been hard, you know, bad dreams, um, hard to kind of get out some of that tense energy at night to fall asleep. Uh, hydration has been, you know, fine, but not great. Um, so I need to be also sitting down and, and, uh, and taking a nice nourishing breath and nourishing drink, um, uh, would be a good pattern for me to get into and exercise, um, yeah, yesterday went great. Had a very good walk. Um, was I, I had lots of pent up energy that I just needed to process, and the walking is really helpful. I'm so grateful that my work hours are flexible and that I can um, do that in nature and get some of that uh, that energy out. Um, also, maybe going back to uh, opening up to others, was able to to talk through some of those more intense emotions with a friend while walking, which was very helpful. And, um, the reward is, is the, the reward for me today is that I can be used, I can still be significant and, um, worthwhile for good, especially, you know, for my, my, um, belief for, to be used for good in God's kingdom, even with my brokenness taken into consideration and I'm so grateful to not be insignificant and to have um, good things to look forward to and that the fight that I'm fighting right now um, is 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 going to be beneficial not only to myself but to my loved ones and Lord willing to to all of you as well so I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you're having a bad day, I am cheering you on. You are not alone in this. This is hard, hard work. So let's do it together. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.